Well, collectors, uh, here we are for uh, number 56 unboxing video, and and welcome. And uh, Charlie, my dog here, he kind of snuck in in the middle of things, so we thought we thought we you could have a little glance at Charlie. Charlie, look at the camera for the guys <laughs> with that nice face of yours. How do you resist that? Giving that that dog treats. <laughs> All right, Charlie, they saw you, now you can get down. Let me see if I can get you down, you're pretty heavy. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, my hair heavy. Charlie's very heavy. So anyhow, here we are in uh, unboxing number 56, and uh, today is um, December 7th, 2022, and you guys all know that date uh, on the Pearl Harbor attack, um, it seems like it comes around every month because time goes by so fast, but uh, uh, it's been another year and um, uh, there's very few uh, survivors left that, um, that go to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor for the ceremony because of the time involved, but um, if you guys have um, never been there, it's a, it's a very worthwhile trip. Um, as you know, the, uh, uh, the battleship Arizona is, uh, was sunk by the Japanese and uh, uh, there were 1177 sailors that were killed on the Arizona and there's uh, 1102 of them are still uh, entombed in the ship which is left as their, as their grave. Um, I remember when I was there, the, uh, uh, they, they take you to a, uh, a floating um, uh, barge, kind of, that uh, you're right over top of the Arizona, and you can look down in the, uh, in the clear water, and you can still see the, uh, the ship down there. And uh, I remember when I was there, every once in a while, uh, drops of oil would come up uh, to the surface, so uh, the ship still has oil in it after uh, after all these years. But that uh, uh, was really something. Uh, I wasn't alive then, and very few of you guys were alive then. But it's something that uh, we really have to remember. It was uh, 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 it was worse than 9/11, I guess, because it got us into the war. But it was a a very tragic thing and uh, everybody should uh, say a little prayer I guess I don't know but all right anyhow we'll get to the uh, to the unboxing uh, I just wanted to say too that um, in the last show uh, I showed you some pictures of uh, my Corvette and my Cadillac convertible and uh, I got a lot of um, a lot of emails uh, regarding those cars uh, where people really like them and uh, I, uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about a year ago I was uh, driving the Corvette on a real nice sunny summer day and uh, once you get into that car uh, I kind of feel like I'm still 24 or 25 years old you know you feel like a kid in that crazy thing with the four-speed shifter and all the noise it makes and all and uh, I look in the mirror the rearview mirror to see how make sure I didn't muss my hair up and then oh that's right I forgot I was bald you know because you really do feel like you're a kid and and on this this occasion uh, I was sitting at a red light and uh, my Corvette, uh, because of the racing cam and so forth, it doesn't really idle smooth. It's kind of a boom, 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 kind of thing like that. But it, but it really sounds cool. And uh, I'm sitting at the red light, and uh, this babe pulls up next to me in a, another convertible, and I'm kind of you know, looking over a little bit, thinking, oh, this is pretty good. You know, I'm thinking, wow, you know. I'm still thinking I'm 22 years old and uh, I'm kind of just trying to look at her and uh, she looks over at me and she says, uh, nice vet, Pop. 
and, <laughs> and of course, of course, that just completely uh, brought me back to uh, reality. And uh, she's probably thinking, "What's a 80-year-old guy doing in a car like that?" Is probably what she was thinking. But uh, anyhow, uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, and I also mentioned last week. Uh, about the back seat in the Cadillac back in the 60s and uh, uh, everybody wants to know what happened back there but if you guys don't have any imagination then the hell with you you can figure it out yourself but uh, all right uh, that's enough of my goings on here and we'll we'll get to the unboxing let's see the uh, first piece we got here kind of a long box I I guess it's a a sword but who knows we shall see got my trusty Bob Burns cutter here it's a new one so hopefully that'll that'll do the job we shall see well works good so far Bob well, looks like we got some more free towels or something here along with some popcorn. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, here we go again, this popcorn. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about the popcorn, but uh, it does make for a good shipping element. Uh, oh, <laughs> there we go. As hard as you try, you're still going to not avoid getting popcorn all over. There just is no other way to, to do it. Well, <laughs> I guess that's it. All right, let me try to go over the trash can here and yeah. Well, the whole the whole floor is all full of popcorn, and I think that's everything that's in the box. But let's see what we got here. Oh boy, what a mess! Well, what are you going to do? It's part of, part of the business. Yeah, this is all taped up in a, in a towel. Oops, I still got Charlie all over me here, too. Holy mackerel. I just put a new shirt on today, and it's all full of dog hair already. Can't win sometimes. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Yeah, this is a good way to uh, to pack here. See, he's got like a heavy, heavy towel. I hope he didn't steal it out of a hotel. But that's all right if he did. Uh, let's see what we got here. We're getting there. Aha! Uh -huh. Wow. Wow, this is a nice item here. Yes, sir, guys. Well, wow. look at the um, look at the patina on this beautiful early Luftwaffe sword, and look at the gilt that's still over the bra the the uh, brass of the sun wheel on the pommel, and all the silvering is still inside. The grip leather is uh, well. There's a little chink there, but that's easy to cover with a little meltonium shoe cream. And a great hanger. The hanger's not falling off like they usually are. Good cross guard and uh, look at the silvering on the uh, scabbard fitting. Boy, both of them really, really nice. Uh, deep patina and the leather is just about perfect. Wow, that's a nice sword. Let's see who made this. Woo, look at that blade. My goodness. Wow, absolutely stone mint. Beautiful blade. Um, who is that now? Uh, Let me take a look. It's not a maker we usually see. It's a Voos. It looks like an Emil Voos. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that's a rare maker for Luftwaffe. Yeah, yeah, isn't that something? An Emil Voos, guys. And look, they use some kind of a, a little different buffer. It's a felt buffer, it looks like. 
different from the ones you usually see. Wow, isn't that something, guys? A, That's a killer. An early, early Luftwaffe sword by Emil Voos. Were you able to get that trademark, Ob? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, this is really a, this is a beautiful thing. Well, I'm, I'm glad to have that. Oh, yeah, that's a nice sword. You like that, collectors? Boy, if you like Luftwaffe swords, <laughs> I don't know how you beat that one. Maybe a Damascus blade, but... Yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's really, really, uh, really great. I, I like that a lot. Thank you, sir, for sending that. Well, on that note, we certainly deserve a, a sip here. Cheers to you guys. It's too early again, but what the heck. Mm, uh, yep, a little bit strong, but uh, that's okay. Mm, a lot bit strong. <laughs> all right, well, we got some popcorn all over our nice table here. Robbie said this this was an untouched cloth here that never been used, and now it's covered in, in, in hair. about five minutes. It's, <laughs> it's covered in hair. It's covered in hair. Yeah, I still got hair. From Charlie all over me. Got a drink ring on it. Mm. Ashes. Ashes, yeah. And it's cut. We're christening it. Mm. All right. Let's see what we got next, guys. Boy, that sword. Uh, wow. Yeah. How about that, Up? Yeah. Let's see what this is. It's just a small, small package here. Shouldn't be too hard to get into. With the box inside. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, more popcorn, of course. <laughs> Can't get away from this stuff today. I'll get most of that out of there. Like a, some kind of letter, and there's something else in here, something small, a one with all the popcorn. Let's see what this is. Aha! I remember now the uh, the, the fellow that sent that look off a sword. He said, "I'm also going to send you the hanger that I have." And look oh, at that! Yeah. Look at that baby. <laughs> it's just beautiful. These um, Luftwaffe sword uh, teardrop hangers are very, very difficult to find. Look at that! How nice the pebbling is on the. And uh, the uh, snap clip is marked on the back. And uh, the reverse of the hanger is really beautiful, too. Boy, it doesn't get any better, huh, with that sword? It just, just seems to have everything. Wow. Well, I should clip that on, but I'll, I'll reserve that pleasure until after I'm done here, guys, if that's okay. Boy, wasn't that a nice thing for him to send that to? I guess he forgot about it and uh, remembered it after he already mailed the sword. Well, that's okay. And that's very good. Boy, you just don't see those kind of things. Let's see what we got here. This came in a, in a bag here the other day. We'll see what that is. This looks nice. Well, wow, looky here, guys. For you guys that like silver things, this looks like it's really going to be nice. Yeah, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, uh, a really good thing. If I can get the paper off of it here. Wow. Untouched. Uncleaned. 
that's a coffee pot guys look at the size of it and it's a um, a Deutscher Hof. you guys know the Deutscher Hof was the hotel in Nuremberg where uh, uh, A.H. stayed for the rallies all the time and he had his own suite there and so forth and yeah, and it's got the uh, the swaths on the on the bottom of it. Tilt it up a little bit. Yeah, hold that for a second. Boy, that's a really a nice pot. Never been cleaned. <clears throat> Let me see the Deutscher Hof on it. On the front there. Yeah. I've had a lot of Deutscher Hof stuff over the years, guys, but I've never seen a coffee pot. I don't know whether any yeah, of you guys have, uh, but that's a uh, that's a. Um, it's mint too. No dents yeah, oh, there's there. no dents. I mean, it just, uh, boy, what a wonderful thing that is. Yeah, that'll be popular. Oh, yeah. Just imagine who received a cup of coffee out of this thing, huh? In the Deutscherhof Hotel. Wow. I like that. Wow, what a, what a pot, huh, Rob? Oh, yeah, it's nice. Sure is nice. Wow. Okay, that's a good thing. Well, we're not doing so bad so far, anyhow. Ah. Let's see what else we got here. Here's another small box. Let's see what's in here. Well, at least there's not full of popcorn. Ooh. Well, guys, yeah, this is uh, this is really a uh, a nice armband. You can see the um, uh, the cord uh, is all um, uh, red, which would uh, which would be the uh, the gal level, I believe. Is that true, of? I think not it that is. Good. I think it is gal level with the red piping. That's you don't the see highest. It, I'll tell you that much. You That's the see, highest. Uh, probably is. Yeah. You don't see the red piping. Yes, it's um. That's really a nice armband. Uh, it's um. Oh, it's got the arrow on which way to wear it, and uh, no tag though. But no tag, but it, and it has been worn. It looks yeah. like it has been worn, no but there's pit. no no holes. I mean, that's really, uh, boy, for you guys that collect these political leader armbands, uh, uh, you're going to look a long time to find that one with the, with the gal piping. Wow, that's a, that's a good thing. Okay, before I uh, get to the next box, uh, uh, Rob just brought up something that uh, I want to mention too. Uh, um, we have several female collectors these days and they're serious and they buy nice things uh, and that's something years ago you never saw. Uh, we have a school teacher that uh, uh, I've known for oh probably 20 years that uh, is an avid collector and uh, uh, she buys something oh a couple times a year and all and uh, and there's others too so it's um, uh, that's a good thing too. You never have too many collectors, male or female. It all it all helps. So we'll get to the next box. Oh, uh, here's just a little. Oh, uh, this is a little envelope. Um, wow, this is the envelope that we've been looking for here. Uh, 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 this has a couple of checks in it and. Uh, Deb, we found the envelope. It's not a UPS envelope. That's what it is. So, uh, so that solves that mystery. So we we won't open that. You know what checks look like, guys. Okay. Well, little stall there, but uh, let's see what we got next here. Um, got a fairly big box. It's a little bit heavy. Not bad though. Oh, it opens right up here too. That's good. Well, no, not that easy. Uh, let's 
see what we got here. Oh my. Wow. Well, first we got an SS insignia. Looks like a good one too. That's a pretty pretty valuable insignia. And then what we have here Look at here guys. This is a uh, this is a helmet that was dug. And this is a picture of where the helmet was dug out. Uh, and if you look closely, you can see the uh, SS runes underneath the rust. Isn't that something? It's a shame that it's not mint, uh, but then again, it's uh, when you get something out of the ground, uh, that's how it looks. Looks like it's got smallpox. Yeah, it looks like it has smallpox. <laughs> the inside is yeah. all. Does uh, it say where it was dug out? Uh, I believe he told me, I don't recall, I'd have to look it up. The ground, I guess. Uh, the ground, yeah, it was dug out of the ground. But, uh, I don't think there's any question that's a, a real SS helmet. Um, I can't even tell if it's a... Nah, it's it's a, not a... Four, no, it's, a, it's an M40, I think. Because it does have the rim on it. Cool. Yeah, well... It is what it is, and there's probably guys that are interested in stuff like that. It's uh, it's pretty neat. Well, you never know what's going to come in here, guys. So there you are, an SS helmet dug right out of the ground. And I like that insignia, too. That is a very good insignia. It's old bullion and really nice. Okay, so that's that. Pretty cool. Yes, sir. Got a little runny nose today, guys. I'm sorry. This will help, though. Mm. Ah, yeah. That does it. All right. Let's see what we got here. Another small box. in this. Looks fairly easy to open. Yep, not bad at all. Up, oh, a box inside of a box. Uh, let's see what's in here. I guess it must be something fragile for somebody to do that. Yep, here we go. Almost there, guys. All right. Not quite as easy as it looked. Two items in here. They're both padded and popcorned and so let's see what these things are. I'm gonna be careful here. I'm not sure what we got here. Oh, we've got a lot of tape and a lot of bubble wrap. I can see that. Get off of me. Get off of my new shirt. Alright, let's see what we got here. We're getting there. Looks like some kind of a, a porcelain item. I think 
in there. Oh my. All right, you guys, you know what that is? You know what it is, don't you? Know? Sure. Deutsche Reich, uh, Reichsbahn. Yeah, this is off of uh, uh, probably the AH train. Well, what's the number on the bottom? Yeah. 231, I'll have to look that up, but uh, that's probably one of the. Uh, one of the sleeping cars, maybe, or whatever. More uh, importantly, where's the top? Aha. Uh -huh. You're right. It's not in the... Oh, wait a minute, Ob. I have to fly it across the room. <laughs> Ob, you are good. You are good. Ta -da. There we go. Well, I'm glad you didn't drop that. Yeah, I didn't even realize it was in there. I'm glad you thought of that. I, I'm looking at them thinking, what's missing here? Pull well, this down. is this is yeah, a very, very up, good like thing. Yeah, it's a very, very right good there. thing. Uh, and ultra rare. All right, now I want you to flip it over again, but grab the top. Okay. That's uh, Nymphenburg? Uh, Nymphenburg, yeah. With the Hitler train car number on the it's bottom upside of it. down, but it's good enough. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's nice. That VR stuff. Yeah, the best. I'm glad to remember that lid, Ob. Yeah, you, yeah. Were, you were right about that. Well, I guess I'm losing it here in my old age. Of course, a coffee pot, teapot would have a lid on it. And if it didn't, that would really hurt the value of it, too, wouldn't it? Sure. Yeah. Let's see what else we have here. Could sell them separately, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that would be that would be mean, wouldn't it? <laughs> Boy. Yeah, I want to buy that lid. I don't want to buy the pot. <laughs> hey, you never know. There's probably six guys out there without a lid, you know. Well, that that could be. You know, you're right. And what could this be here? So far, some pretty, pretty neat stuff. So, hopefully, this will be cool too. There we go. It's another piece of porcelain. Oh wow! This is, uh, yeah, this is um, Mycin. Mycin, the Red Dragon pattern, uh, which comes from the uh, tea house on top of the mountain. In Berchtesgaden, so got the right. Uh, yep. That looks like the right logo to me. That's it. That's the that's it. logo. And uh, yeah, that's Meissen all the way. And uh, people like those little vases. Yeah, it's it's like maybe a little flower vase, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty rare piece. You know, we see the plates and the little yeah. dishes and the the uh, little cups, but um, there's not as many as them. I don't remember seeing one of these. That's a very, very good thing. Well, there you go, guys. Those are not uh, not edge weapons, but then again, uh, we all collect different things, and uh, uh, these are um, these are quite beautiful, and I'm very happy to have them. I'll put them away for the moment here. Yeah, how about that? A Meissen vase, guys. Pretty nice thing to put on your desk and uh, put a little petunia in there or something. <laughs> that way your wife will think that you're human and you like flowers and, you know. Oh, I don't just like these daggers and sewers. Look, I have a vase with flowers <laughs> in it, too. Oh, man. That'll get you far. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. What we got next here? Uh, it looks like one more box, and uh, then after this, I'll show you some of the things that uh, that I bought in the last week. We, Rob and I, went to a couple of shows. Uh, 
let's see what's in here now. Boy, this, whatever it is, it's pretty heavy. Hmm. Wow. Hard to get out of here, too. All right, here we go. Well, it's well packed. I like that pack job. Now, what could be inside of it, guys? Gotta take a drink before I look. Mmm. Ah, yes. I'm sorry to be so annoying. I know you want to see what's in the, the box, and here I am drinking and smoking instead of doing my job here. Ooh. Wow. This is something you don't see. Wow, look at that. You guys know what this is? This is a German naval diver's knife. Um, we don't see them very often at all. And it looks like um, from what I see so far, the uh, uh, there's some markings here on the on the cross guard of this. And see these these screw out of the brass scabbard, and they have a washer here so that the blade stays watertight. Oh, there we go. See, we just unturn it. Boy, the threading is beautifully done perfectly machined just like the Germans always do you don't get wobbles on the on the original things well wow, that's a lot of threads there too Wow and looky here guys it's a it's a definitely a Nazi piece too it's a WKC WKC yeah how about that <laughs> yeah boy that's a that's a nice piece the blade looks like it might have a blue finish to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen that before. Oh. And it's got the keel distributor on the back, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Let me see that. Hold on a second. Wow. Let me see. Uh... Yeah. It's, um, it's marked with uh, August Luneburg. Uh, Lunenburg had a shop at Kiel where they sold a lot of different um, naval supplies including beautiful daggers and I guess their line included divers knives too. How about that? A, 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 a third break period um, WKC mark with the initials underneath and the distributor Lunenburg. I just don't think it uh, I don't think it gets any better than that. <clears throat> is there a Kriegsmarine stamp on any of it anywhere? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Maybe the top, top of the pommel of the knife. Or... I don't know. Uh, sometimes there is. Uh, well, it may be with these markings here. Yeah. Um, I can't really see what they are. Did you get a close up of those markings? They might tell us something too. I'll get them again, but I don't think they're third right stamps. Well, well WKC whatever, is good it's definitely, me, yeah. uh, definitely a third right piece. And boy, look at that, how it goes in there. Wow. Mm. Wow, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, uh, there's just very, very few of, um, of these period uh, diver's knives around. And uh, for somebody that, um, uh, that collects uh, naval or diving gear or even, uh, what, a, what a fabulous find uh, that would be. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool thing. Well, I have to say those things that, uh, that we saw are all... Uh, every one of them was nice. 
right down to the armband. <laughs> you just uh, uh, pretty cool, I must say. Oh, here's a little letter too. As promised, Third Reich era diver's knife. There you go. Well, you came through on your promise, sir. That is definitely a Third Reich piece, and I love it. I think it's really nice. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a few things that uh, that Robbie and I found uh, at a couple of small shows this week. And uh, there's nothing, uh, nothing earth shaking here, but uh, you guys like to look at stuff, and um, a lot of these things are good for um, starting out. They're not going to be high priced. And uh, uh, here's a um, a Luftschutz helmet. This is what they call the Gladiator helmet. It's uh, two piece, and um, the original finish has got a little age on it, but the decal is uh, just about a hundred percent and it still has its original chin strap and then inside uh, the uh, liner is still very good uh, and then there's some RLB markings um, stamped into the metal there and then 58 which I assume is the size this helmet is really a big helmet Robbie and I tried it on and it, it was flopping all over the place. We look like a couple clowns with it on, but uh, but that's a, that's a pretty neat thing for you guys that, that collect helmets. Let's see what else we got in this box. Yeah, here's a uh, here's a nice um, uh, imperial uh, army uh, belt and buckle. The leather is still really in nice condition and it's that two-piece buckle with the nickel insert has the um, Prussian helmet in the center and the got mit uns God is with us so that's a pretty good thing let's see what else is here oh yeah I remember this one remember this NSKK ob sure yeah this is kind of a cool dagger um, you guys know in 1936 when the NSKK daggers were uh, officially announced uh, they had SA daggers before and they were ordered to have the scabbards painted black well this guy it looks like he probably put a little black on uh, the grip of his dagger too um, and because the grip is really interesting the way it looks and you can see the old anodizing still under the areas where the uh, paint wore off. See the anodizing is still there and uh, it's kind of cool and uh, this has a, um, a group mark on it um, TH there and let's see what the blade looks like oh it's not bad at all good Alice for Deutschland with a, with a pretty deep uh, darkening in the backgrounds of the letters and it was produced by um, Olga Bruder Heller that's the the Heller firm that wrote the the name horizontally stamped in not the one with the anchor that's a different Heller firm uh, but the blades not bad either that's a I think it's a very very interesting uh, NSKK there's a lot to look at here and study and uh, um, it's a fun dagger. So we like that one. You like that one, don't you, Ob? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, uh, this is. It's got the original um, hanger on it, and um, uh, the scabbard appears to be painted a real dark brown. Um, it looks the paint appears as though it could be period though and it's got a good short hanger and uh, a group mark um, TH again it's got a nice grip Let's see what the blade looks like on it well it shows a little wear uh, but at least there's no pitting or problems with it and it's um, that one's made by SMF. Don't see that too much on SA daggers. 
So that's not an expensive dagger and uh, it's a good one for you guys out there that have been looking for an SA and your your budget you don't want to break. So that might might be a good piece. Um, let's see what we've got here next. Uh, uh, this is, we bought this one, there. this is one of those aluminum uh, DLVs with the crackle finish. Yeah, they were only made by Helbig normally, and uh, they have uh, the, they're all metal, but it's made to simulate leather by putting the crackling in it, and then the metal is painted. Um, and what's interesting too about this piece, it still has the original hanger, but it also has the the uh, NSFK uh, belt loop, and that's a that's a rare rare accoutrement. See that with the aluminum pebbled D D ring and. And then the blade, it's um, it's still bright, but it's got a little bit of age on it. It's not too bad. Um, and it's, it, yeah, it's made by Helbig. And as usual, the Helbig etching wasn't very good, so it's kind of light there. Uh, but you can still make it out. Uh, and then, uh, oh yeah, and we have a... Um, we have a, uh, an NSFK stamp uh, on the scabbard there too. Some of these later aluminum versions won't have any markings on the on the scabbard but uh, that one does so that makes it kind of nice. So it's a uh, again it's not a piece that'll break the bank uh, price wise but it's still still pretty nice and uh, you always have to have an army dagger, I guess. Uh, but this is really a nice one, though. Um, this is uh, early fittings, the uh, generic B type, and not really nice patina to the scabbard and uh, and to the pommel. And uh, the grip is a real dark orange. And uh, what's nice about it? Uh, if you look at the scabbard bands, you're going to see that they have those asterisks on them here that were put in there to cover the uh, casting seam. And for you guys that know what the asterisk is, what do you think the maker is going to be? You're right. It's going to be Robert <laughs> Klass. I knew you knew that. And look at that. One of those fantastic nickel-plated blades. Really, really nice absolute stone mint that blade but it's not marked <laughs> but it is a class that's really a nice uh, nice army dagger okay and moving along here we uh, we also bought a uh, bought a couple of uh, HJ knives uh, and also a uh, an interesting hanger I'll show you this hanger because it's uh, something you don't see very often the hanger it has the um, shows some wear but it has the um, the uh, metal brackets that hold the uh, brocade straps and if you look at the metal, you can see that it's all gilded, real old gilt. Uh, so these these uh, hangers were worn with a uh, general's dagger. And uh, on the other side of them, they show a lot of wear, which you would think they would. But see how the wear rubs through, and then yet you still see the gilding in here. I mean, that's great. Uh, they talk to you as they say and the guild is all worn on the back because that would be the part that swings against the uniform but it's still there on the front there's a lot of it still there so they are absolutely original army generals hangers so that's something you don't see too much uh, they're not in pristine condition but they are what they are and then we also uh, we picked up uh, uh, a few um, Hitler Youth Knives and uh, this one um, 
the plating is just it's perfect on the on the piece it's really really nice um, and the scabbard uh, they just don't come any nicer than that the leather is still good shows a little wear but the scabbard is really great and uh, and the blade womb uh, it's it's one uh, with no motto uh, but the blade is just um, just terrific on it I don't know whether it really doesn't have any sharpening on it either um, it on a Hitler Youth stand art that too that's a mint blade and uh, it's got a RZM number uh, 731 which is uh, that's August Merton so that's a uh, that's a very very nice piece you very very rarely see them uh, in that kind of condition so I like that uh, I don't know whether the others will stand up to that condition but we'll we'll see here this one uh, this one has a um, a fairly good hilt. It's got the wear here from the from the uh, leather strap, and some uh, wear to the to the paint. And um, uh, the blade is um, the blade has been uh, sharpened, um, unfortunately, and uh, uh, on both sides. But the blade is still bright though, and it doesn't have any pitting or anything. And uh, uh, it's marked uh, RZM M740-38. Uh, that's Hartkopf that made that. Where is it marked on the Ricasso? Uh, it's marked on the um, on the Ricasso, but it's kind of hard to see. But it is there if you really. It's uh, as I say RZM M740. 38 so it was produced in 1938 not too bad of a piece but all right and then the, the next one we have uh, this one uh, again has a uh, boy it has a really terrific hilt on it the hilt is perfect. The grips are perfect in the insignia. The scabbard is really, really nice. Just almost perfect. And then unfortunately, again, it's one with a motto too. It's an early one. Uh, you can still see the motto, but there's been uh, sharpening on the uh, on the blade. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, on on both sides and. Uh, this one was produced by um, Gottlieb Hemisphere, and you know you can tell it's real early because it doesn't have the Ricasso. They didn't start putting the Ricasso on the blades until about 1936. So it's still, I mean, it does have the motto and all, and uh, hey, you know these kids, I've they seen, sharpened them. I've seen worse. I've seen worse, yeah. And then lastly. Uh, this is a, um, a, a pretty nice piece. Uh, again, look at the condition of the hilt. Uh, there's no wear at all where the strap was. The grip plates are nice. Let's see, on the other side, the same way. It's really in nice condition. And then, boom, a mint blade. Yeah, that's uh, nice, wow. That blade is, uh, it's got a Ricasso. So it's, um, I don't know, what, it's probably 38 or 39, maybe 40. And then on the reverse, it's, uh, it's a Schüttelhofer RZM 713. But that blade is remarkable. It's really, really, uh, really good. So those are the things that, uh, that Robbie and I found this week rummaging around. Went to a little show down near, near the Jersey Shore. I think they have all of uh, 10 tables, even that, I don't know, but uh, uh, you can get out of there in about uh, 20 minutes if you're real quick. Uh, and then we found some of these things too at the uh, Allentown show uh, last Friday. Uh, so there you go, guys. Uh, I guess that wraps up 
the unboxing for this week. Um, no SS Tigers, but uh, well, you never know. Next week, maybe we'll have some. Uh, we're going to keep plugging along and uh, make sure you start that Christmas shopping soon. Remember, it's Pearl Harbor Day. That's always the day that I kind of make a metal note that, uh-oh, it's time to get scared. Better do some shopping. So, uh, okay, we'll see you all next week, and, uh, and thanks a lot for watching the videos, and if I can do anything for you, send me an email, okay? All right, see you next week.